Ruan Estol, thanks for chatting with me again. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, we are going to be talking about Agents of Mercy, the, the new album, which is called The Black Forest tonight, and a new type of album for Agents of Mercy this time, a concept album, Ruana. Yeah, well, it's not, not the first time making a concept album uh, for me, really, but uh, with, with Agents of Mercy, this is the third one, and um, I think... Uh, uh, all three of the albums, they came together in, you know, kind of different ways. The first one being more like, a, starting off more like a, a solo album that I did in between other albums with Flower Kings and Transatlantic and stuff. Uh, a little bit of more acoustic, uh, shorter songs. And the second one, uh, we had we had already played live, uh, so it was more like we were actually looking looking at forming a band to perform music live, etc., and uh, more like an ongoing project. And that one, we focused more on shorter songs, uh, taking inspiration from maybe not the the, the bigger <laughs> so-called prog names like Yes, Emma Slake and Palmer and Genesis. We were more looking at maybe um, what what Beatles did, what Queen did, other bands that are more like in um, in the outer region of, of what you would call prog. And uh, for this third album, it just felt natural. We didn't talk much about it really, but it just felt natural to to do something that was more traditional progressive rock. So the songs became more elaborated, uh, more themes put in the songs, longer sections, and we were trying to write uh, both the music and, and the lyrics from more like a, a concept, uh, an idea, whatever <laughs> a concept is these days, you know. So describe the concept of this particular album for me. It's it's a very dark album. Uh, it is a dark album, and, and, and this is probably something that I tried, you know, to push it uh, towards a, a, a darker uh, side of things because I've I've done so many albums and I've, I've been known to do so much music, you know, with the Flower Kings in particular, uh, where where it's, it's all sunny and bright. I would, I mean, looking at it, uh, honestly, uh, there are themes in Flower Kings music that are dark too, but, but I think probably the... Uh, the goodness and the light and everything, you know, it prevailed. But this time it felt like this is something I haven't done before. And um, and it's uh, it's something that interests me also, sort of the uh, the darker sides of, 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 of mankind and, and and the the way we actually, I mean, just looking at it now, uh, look around the world and see all the uh, the problems as far as war, <laughs> uh, of course, um, starvation and how the money and the power is divided between people and how people fight over money and power all the time you know and you can see uh, different diseases you know coming up that we can't some we can control and some we can't control and uh, there are all sorts of of, of uh, scary things you know uh, so it's it's like i mean having kids it's like you're you're a little bit worried about the future to be honest but uh, this is something we we wanted to look into, but we wanted to look into it maybe uh, not to sound too realistic. So we sort of took a look m maybe more like from a historic perspective or something or, or making up a story, you know, to cover this, uh, these issues. So the story behind it's almost like a, a medieval type theme? Yeah, I would say we haven't we haven't actually placed it in time, but we're sometimes talking about this, like a like there there was almost this guy, you know, and you can see him on the cover of of the the album, you know, and it's I, I would suppose it's like uh, three four hundred years ago or something, but it could be. Uh, it's it's some, sometimes when you look at a film and and there's. Uh, you don't really know if it's uh, it's a time before our time or it's a time 400 years ahead or something and and that's probably it's 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 just a different time it's not now it's it could be it could be later it could be a, a couple of hundred years before you know and um, this is the way we we um, uh, sort of we it's more like a, a, a travel through uh, time to uh, to to space uh, through um, I mean different different ages and and 
well, almost like a journey, I would say, where you where you come upon uh, different characters and uh, some of some of it really creepy stuff, you know. But <laughs> like like the thing we we wrote about the uh, Elspeth Bathory, but that that's something that came up pretty late, I think, in 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 the process of of the album. It, it actually had another title before that. I mean, just looking at today, how much people spend and how much people care about. Uh, how much it's it's it turned into be so much about looks how you look you know and uh, and and you can you can spend so much money uh, with uh, different surgery and and stuff like to, to change your I mean today it's possible to do anything you know and people would uh, would would spend lots and lots of money to to change your uh, your image to uh, change your your looks. And um, to be young again, it seems like it's really important to be young. And and I mean, we we can't ex escape really. Everyone gets old, and and in the end, we're we're gonna die. That's that's all we can be sure. We 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 are born, and and we are born alone, and we're gonna die alone. That's uh, it's it's kind of sad, but <laughs> that's the way it is, you know. And I think in 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 the meantime, you 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 just have to spend your life uh, being a good person and trying your best you know and 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 with age it's like uh, we all have we all have parents you know when we get old and and um i think uh, aging can actually be a, be a beautiful thing you know and if if you just look at it it's uh, every it seems like every age it has its its beauty i think but uh, i mean this particular song about Els elspeth bathory it was um Actually, uh, a countess who, who is said to have killed hundreds of people, because she discovered that uh, uh, this, according to the to the legend, she discovered that blood from from a virgin could actually do something uh, amazing to her skin. You know, so that's that's what she did. She did actually capture lots of of probably uh, peasants' daughters and uh, and. Uh, Put them in prison and and then slowly kill them to to uh, according to the legend to use the blood to uh, to make her skin look young again. That is scary stuff. <laughs> uh, it's it's really scary stuff. But this is something I, I I heard actually probably a couple of years ago. I learned about this story. I had I never know. I mean I mean living in Europe, you should probably have heard this because it's uh, I think it's actually from um, the region of of Hungary. I think. And uh, I mean, normally we we know in 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 Sweden we have a pretty good um, good idea about uh, because that's what we learn in school, you know, about uh, the history of of Europe. But this is something that's not not uh, has been talked about much, you know. So musically, apart from apart from going for the longer songs on this album, are there any other ways that uh, Agents of Mercy has uh, has differed on this album to the previous two? Uh, well, looking at the album, as I said, the first one was uh, because it started off uh, pretty much uh, as uh, almost like a fully acoustic album, but then turned into, I would say, at least halfway, <laughs> halfway acoustic album. So it's it's very um, uh, I would say soft, uh, based on uh, acoustic themes, shorter songs. The second one I would say probably turned towards more of a pop side of of, of progressive pop. Uh, and this third one I would say we we probably thought of it more like a, a rock album, and and sometimes I would even go as far as say it's heavy rock. Uh, and this is this is interesting because I would say half the band at least they're they've grown up with with heavy metal. I I have in a sense, but I was I, I came more from from I mean uh, being my age. It was it was the Beatles of course, and then uh, then then came all the the psychedelic bands, and then in the beginning of the 70s or maybe the late uh, 60s around 69 maybe came. Uh, Bands like uh, Black Sabbath and Deep Purple and and Led Zeppelin later and um, um, so so he heavy heavy metal came into my life a little bit later. But for the other guys, they they are a little bit younger, so they probably grew up in a time when bands like Judas Priest and Iron Maiden were big, you know. And 
so it, it felt, I think it felt natural. And they, when we discuss music within the band, it's it's very obvious that that I'm a little bit older <laughs> than the the other guys, and and they have um, a, a really uh, interesting connection to to uh, to heavy metal and, ban- and bands and artists like Dio and and Rainbow and and those guys. And uh, by that time, I think I was into something else. You know, I I um, I went through a period of of listening to to uh, Deep Purple and Led Zeppelin, of course, but. But after that, I sort of left the metal side. So for me, it was interesting to sort of reconnect. Because, I mean, for every guitar player, once you plug in your guitar and you have some sort of a distortion device or an amplifier where you can sort of crank it up to 11, then then there's going to be, you know, <laughs> you plug in and you stomp your box and there's going to be distortion. And what's going to happen? You're probably going to end up playing some kind of a, a metal riff, you know. That that just comes with the guitar playing, I suppose. And um, so, so for me, it was was fun too. And I, I want, I think I tro- probably when writing the songs, were pushing a, a bit to be able to 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 do some riffing finally. And I've done it with Transatlantic, of course, and I've done it occasionally with the Flower Kings. But but it uh, well, it just felt like the the right time. I mean, sometimes you can't really tell why you do things. You just do them because it feels right, you know. It's interesting you mention those uh, those classic rock bands. Uh, Led Zeppelin, in in particular, is one band that I thought of when I heard the track Citadel. It's actually my favorite track on the album. Tell me a bit about that one. Well, Citadel is actually the the track I, I was talking about, Elspeth Bathory. You know, that's that's the. That's the track because she had actually a citadel where she took all these uh, maidens, you know, and imprisoned them, and uh, some some were down a, a, a cold and dark dungeon, and, and later killed them. And I I would like to say this is all according to legend, but there this this seems to be actually paperwork left, books left, and I think actually even she is said to have kept. Uh, some kind of bookkeeping of of the 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 girls she killed, you know, and and what she did, and I don't know. I mean, she she was she was like a, a noble lady. She was countess, you know. So um, she, um, I think she ended her, her days. They didn't actually. She was convicted, but I, I don't think they killed her. She he, she was actually imprisoned and um, and died at the age of I don't know maybe fifty five or <laughs> my my age or something like that. Um, living living uh, actually I think they they kept her in prison and and just you know uh, some kind of I think uh, they made some some brickworks to to. <laughs> To make sure she she wouldn't get out, you know. But um, so uh, and and I suppose I I can't say for sure, but I think probably this citadel is is still there, you know. And this is this is part of Hungarian history. Probably they they know more about it. But uh, I I mean writing the song, I try to um, I try to read a little bit about it and uh, do some. Um, uh, you know, investigation about the, the topic and <laughs> what is said, but you can never be sure. This is this is a couple of hundred years ago, so so it's um, but it's 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 scary, and it, I mean again shows what people are are able to do, you know, and and how selfish people can be, you know, and and uh, it's it's just one of those things that interest me, and I, I just recently watched also a documentary about Henry VIII, who was uh, king of England, and uh, lots of lots of scary stuff going on there too, you know. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, I'm I'm sure there is, and I I've, I've recently uh, learned also about Swedish history, and I'm I'm not sure about you're fam- familiar with uh, with uh, the um, I think. It's, Maybe a Rum- Romanian um, uh, prince uh, Vlad Tepes, who who's said to be like the role model for Count Dracula or something yep. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, and and he was known to to put uh, to chop people's heads off and put them on 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 stakes, you know. And and we thought that was gross, you know, terrible, uh, really scary stuff. But then I recently uh, I learned about uh, uh, a Swedish king some four or five hundred years ago, 
could do the exact same thing. And this is something we never learned about in school, you know. They probably just kept it under wraps because it's so gross. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he did actually, and, and that's the south part, south part of Sweden. Uh, they were just trying to, um, I mean, just for political reasons. They were, I mean, Denmark is close. Uh, some people in the southern parts of Sweden, they wanted to belong to Denmark. And, you know, peasants, they... Some, sometimes there's just like an uprising almost, you know, uh, going on. And, and then you, you just do something to scare them. You know? and, and this is something that um, we've done here in Sweden and in England and many, many other countries, I suppose. Very, very scary stuff, you know. So it's, it's all around. And I mean, the, 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 uh, the evil is all around and it's happening all the time in all ages. And... Um, and it's just, uh, I think it's just a choice. And, uh, and the scary thing is actually that this Swedish king was also put, his image is put on one of the, um, the, um, the bills uh, on our Swedish money, you know. And when people found out this, they wanted him, <laughs> they wanted it, them to so, sort of withdraw all the money that ha had this, uh, this person on it, you know, because it's, we felt ashamed that this is something that happened in Sweden, you know. But I think it's happening all the time, and, and it's happening in, in different regions of the world. And I suppose probably down in Australia, you've been, you've been lucky because uh, you have a shorter history probably, uh, but uh, there's probably some ugliness going on everywhere. So. Well, you may remember um, I'm, I'm broadcasting from Tasmania probably an hour or so from the, the worst massacre in the Southern Hemisphere that occurred in the late 90s. Um, I don't know if you remember Port Arthur. Uh, and the massacre down there, about 38 people were killed. Uh, I I don't remember, be probably because uh, it's it's. I mean, wherever you you're situated in the world, there's going to be some kind of filtering as far as the 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 news flow. You know, if you're yeah. in America, it's going to be filtered. If you're in, even if even in Sweden, you know, we I think we cover most of the world, but. But unfortunately, some news seems more important. You know, if there's like a big film star that get caught drunk in a car, it's more important news than than 38 people get killed in Australia. Yeah. That's that's a, that's sad, that's the sad state of of uh, uh, journalism or or the news today. I, I would say. Well, the the world is a lot smaller as well these days with the internet. Even 15 years ago, news uh, may not have travelled as quickly as it does now. We we only heard um, was it was it Norway where that uh, fellow went nuts on an island yeah. somewhere? Yes, yes, it um, was. That I mean that that got everywhere really quick. But um, but even 15 years ago, the internet was not such a such a big no. thing. No. You know, you're you're absolutely absolutely right, and I think just looking at what what's happening in North Africa and with Egypt and all those countries, you know, and the liberation, you know, it's probably very much down to the fact that that you can go on the internet and they can't really stop it, you know. So, mm -hmm. so that helped, I think. So it's in in a, in a way, I think the world is probably a better place with with the internet, yeah. Even if it's lots of, I mean. Uh, wasted time I would say on the internet too but I, I, I like to look at it as a posit positive thing because now if something happens in China you can you can know it in 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 Stockholm a couple of hours later you know or even 10 minutes later in fact uh, just getting back to to the track Citadel I, I think that's the one where you share lead vocals with uh, Nad Silvan isn't it yeah yeah that's right um, was that something you did on the previous albums? Did you did you share lead vocals, or even I think on the song after Citadel, you you do the full lead vocal? I I, I do, yeah. And and uh, well, I just have to remind myself about. Uh, uh, I think I I didn't sing much on on Drama Rama on on the first album. I did sing a couple of songs. Um, I do a lot of harmonizing, but I mean the the idea with. Um, with Agents of Mercy, for me, being also lead vocalist in the Flower Kings and, and also with Transatlantic, it felt like I wanted to have someone who took took on the main part of the lead vocals, you know, to concentrate on my guitar playing, you know, and uh, to have like a, a sort of a, a center stage front person, you know, who could just sort of visualize and, and do all that singing. Mm. But... Uh, I think it's also nice to have to sort of 
do a little bit of singing, even even a bit of, of uh, lead vocals. I think so. That's I think that's probably what what's going to be on, on on the next album too. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. You 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 both worked really well together. It was nice. Sometimes I think it's um, uh, just a question of uh, finding the right. I mean, s- some stuff I sing maybe better than Ad, and some s- stuff he sings better than me. You know, it just works better. And that's that's the way it, it worked with Flower Kings too. You know, it's uh, you you write a song and then you think Hass, Hasse should sing it, and then when he tried to sing it, it really doesn't sound right. So then I end up singing it a- anyway because it sounded better on my demo. You know. So I think um, I think that's. Uh, but I, I mean, I, I kind of enjoy singing. But sometimes it's it's really nice to be on stage and just concentrate on your guitar playing, because that's how I started. You know, in the beginning, I actually started playing the bass. But once I I got into playing the guitar, the electric guitar in '73, I think uh, that's that's how I started. And then I was almost forced to start singing when I when I uh, uh, became the, the guitar player in a band called Kaipa, you know, and they they, they told me, you got to sing, Reiner. And I said, I can't sing, sorry. You can sing, you, you can sing the falsetto. No, I, I, what's that? What's a falsetto? I, I, I haven't heard of a falsetto before that, you know. So I <laughs> I ended ended up singing like a four part, uh, but uh, singing the, the falsetto part, you know, and that was kind of uh, scary. And then um, a couple of years later, I actually started singing a little bit more. And, and finding my own voice. But, uh, I mean, going back to just playing guitar is sometimes really nice for me. 2011 has been a massive year for progressive rock. There's been some fantastic albums by uh, not just newbies, but uh, established and, and classic prog artists like Van de Graaff Generator, Steve Hackett, Stephen Wilson have all put out fantastic stuff, and now you with Agents of Mercy. Um, what's your take on this year? How's 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 the reaction to to prog in Europe at the moment? Uh, I think it seems like it's it's slowly getting better and better. And I'm not not talking about just the releases this this year, but uh, it seems like as far as festivals, as far as magazine, we have a big uh, big magazine uh, in England called Classic Rock Prog. And it just keeps getting better and better, and, and have good sales. Uh, I think there's some some quite big uh, magazine in in Germany too that covers most of Europe. And I mean, the classic rock can be found everywhere, you know, in Europe and probably in in the United States too. I just got a copy of Classic Rock in my mailbox the other day with a picture of you. I think were you doing a round table with Ian Anderson and Steve Hackett and a couple of others? That's right. They. They called me in uh, probably late August to do a roundtable interview uh, that is going to be divided into three different uh, sections, you know, and and I think around two of them already. And I don't know what what uh, what do we have on the cover? <laughs> I can tell you if this, if it's the latest one. I think on the outer cover there it was Hawkwind. Yeah, that's the latest one. Yeah, that's the latest one. And there's going to be one more next issue. Excellent. And. Uh, yeah, and it's. I think it's a great magazine. You know, it's uh, lots of interesting stuff, and it really doesn't matter if you're into space rock or if you're into Canterbury or if you're into prog metal. There's going to be something for you to read, and if you if you want to read about old Pink Floyd stuff or uh, Genesis or or Yes, uh, different formations of Yes, you can read about it. You know, and and good interviews with with everyone. I think. So that that's uh, and 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 actually that roundtable thing was interesting. Uh, I mean, interesting thing because it was uh, was different generations. I would say of, of prog with with guys like Ian Anderson starting out in the probably mid or late sixties, and then you have guys like me and uh, and Mark Kelly from Marillion who are sort of the next maybe the next generation. So that's that's interesting, but. But again, you you have uh, festivals. You have, um, I think, uh, good coverage as far as all the, the the web presence, you know, in Europe. And to me, it looks like, uh, and I, I mean, you have <clears throat> you have people like Stephen Wilson who probably can go around Europe and and United States playing uh, playing his new album, you know, to decent crowds and. Um, and I'm, by the way, it's a good album, I think. And Steve Hackett's album is really one of my favorites uh, this year. And there's another, uh, I don't know if it's 
that's successful, but uh, I think it's a really good album by a band called Haken from England. And um, they they made their second album. I think the first one was called Aquarius, uh, or maybe Aquarium. And it's a uh, kind of um, kind of metal, but not really metal prog. I would say very melodic and very interesting as far as melodies and and harmonies and stuff like that. Um, I think that they're one of the better bands and one of the best releases for me this year. And, and Stephen Wilson, of course. And I like parts of the opus, and I like parts of the Pain of Salvation, you know. And uh, so I think it's um, it's actually uh, a good time to be to playing progressive rock in in Europe. Um, America can't speak for that much because we haven't been over there for a couple of months. And uh, as far as the uh, well, the magazine situation, and all that, I can't really tell, you know. Just a final question on on the Black Forest being a very dark and and uh, well, almost almost depressing in some ways thematically anyway. Um, if this is how mankind is, as far as you see it, well, what is the answer? Uh, well, I'm not saying that this is what what mankind is. I think I think it's more like uh, it's it's a choice, and I think too many people make the wrong choice. You know, they they choose. Uh, Money, uh, as they say, uh, uh, they choose money uh, over, um, I would say, love, perhaps. Uh, because if you can feel love, not only for your oldest family member, you can feel love for your neighbor, you can feel love for your country, you can feel love for other countries, other people, you can feel compassion for people, you can feel that if you you have some kind of power you know as far as politics or or uh, business um, i mean just looking at the banks uh, how they manipulate uh, i would say they start manipulating the politics now uh, and, and and i'm not surprised but if you have some kind of power and you can make the right choice by by doing best for as many people as possible or you can do the wrong choice by uh, doing what's good for a handful of people to get richer. And these people, unfortunately, have already so much. They have so much power. They have so much money. They have so many options. And then you have poor people somewhere, you know, in, in, in the Horn of Africa. They have no choice at all. They just try to survive the day. And some of they don't, you know. And it's because they are absolutely powerless. And there are other people in the world that have the power to make the right choices. Maybe, maybe not you, maybe not me, but people who are, who are in power, and they make the, the wrong choices for. I don't know. I know. I don't know for what reasons really, but because you can, you can just just get so rich, and when you <laughs> when you have all the money, you know, and all the power, and you can you can travel anywhere in the world, you can buy houses. You can buy industries, you can buy anything, and you just just keep doing it. But th there are exceptions. I can't really, I can't come up with names right now, but I, I've, I've learned about the Swedish guy. I'm just trying to remember his name. He was a big, big guy in the, in the uh, Swedish economy and, and industries and stuff like that. And he, he actually turned around completely and now is helping people in Africa. And uh, he took... All of all of his money, all of his savings, everything you know, all of his company money, and and put it in, into helping other people. And I can say what happened in his life, but maybe something happened, you know, to to make him just change direction, you know. But it was very unexpected, and it uh, I don't know. It's like st stories like that that make me happy because I think it's hope. So I don't think it's it's hopeless. It's just that too many people being too egoistic and thinking about themselves only so i mean in in, in every little step every, every it's like every day you when you wake up you 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 should have uh like a, a, try to be on a mission to to do even if it's little things do good things for as many people as possible and i think uh, if everyone 
did that, I think uh, the world would be a different place. And uh, and every time, I mean, it happens to all of us. I mean, there, there's going to be the wrong, the wrong choices you make. But uh, but as as long as you're aware of it and you're going to say, okay, next time I'm not going to do this. I'm going to I'm going to do it different, you know. And I, I want to make good for for everyone, for my family, for my country, for for my you know fellow human being or or animal or whatever it is, you know you care for then for the environment of course you know because that's another issue you know you're may, not making the right choices for environment uh, because you can sort of lose some of your profit and that's well it's a it's a big 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 uh, discussion that, that would take too long of time to to get into but but that's that's the things that concerns me you know and when, when uh, uh, I think there are so many ways you can actually do good for so many people and for 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 your your country and and the environment and the future and think about maybe a couple of hundred years from now, my children's children, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, I think that's the I think that's probably the the mindset you know you, you need to get into that this is this this world is not only for me. But now I think it's so much been focused around me and me and my needs and uh, and uh, maybe you gotta you know uh, sort of give something away to to make sure that future gen generations also will have a, a a world they can live in and uh, they have a situation. I mean, as far as politics and religion and all that, you know, that where they can exist, you know. You've been saying for a long time that um, that love is the only answer, haven't you? Well, yeah. Uh, well, it sounds. I don't know. Sounds. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> a bit simplistic, I know. But but when you sort of uh, peel all the layers off, you know, that's what 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 you. That's what you're left with in the end, because as I don't know, sometimes uh, things happen in your life, and then something like. Um, a relative dies, like my father died a year ago, uh, almost a year ago, and and then, just a couple of days, or or in that moment, you sort of everything changes, you know, and start thinking in, thinking about different things, and 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 look at your family in a different way, and and look at things in a in a different way, because that's the reality of it, you know. We're we're all gonna die, and and we're of course all, all gonna die in in different different ways some die in in, in a war some die uh, maybe uh walking on a landmine some die in a in, in a disease we can't stop and um but that's that's the reality of it you know and and we just need to try to make every day uh, as good as possible for as many people as possible that's <laughs> that i would say would is and 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 i call that love so it's not like physical love between man and woman it's it's love for your children and for your pets and for your neighbor and you know everything and for for the system or whatever the religion or love of god or it's of your your love of choice i would say it's a it's a principle love isn't it yeah it it is it is yeah the greeks had a word for it they called it agape uh-huh interesting agape all the best with uh, the Black Forest. Uh, it's a fantastic, fantastic uh, next step in Agents of Mercy's uh, evolution and uh, look forward to the next one. Roy Stolt, thanks very much for speaking with me again. Oh, thank you for having me.